Over the last several tutorials, we've added various different types of fields to content types. Now that we've familiarized ourselves with the mechanics of adding and configuring fields, it's time to take a step back and look at some of the important best practices to assure we're getting the most out of this powerful system. Drupal Core provides us with a basic but very useful set of field types. If you're a programmer or have worked with databases before, you'll likely recognize Drupal's core fields as a parallel standard database field types. But if you haven't spent much time working with databases, these field types might seem somewhat convoluted. A quick overview from a 20,000 foot perspective should help you better understand what options are available and how they relate to each other. In general, there are just five categories of field types in core. Text for storing alphanumeric data, such as body copy or a person's name. Numbers for storing things that we might want to do math upon. Booleans, which is just a fancy way of saying something that has only two states, such as yes or no or true or false. Terms for categorizing content. And files for things such as documents and images. In prior versions of the field system, what is called CCK prior to Drupal 7, you added fields by specifying what you wanted to store in the database. This is great for people who are familiar with databases, but not as intuitive for non-developers. In Drupal 7, you specify something called a field type that automatically creates a database storage structures and provides the appropriate widgets for entering the data. To gain a better idea of how fields works, let's take a look at how these three layers are organized for Drupal's core field types. The first category of fields is text. Text fields are very open and can store virtually anything you can type into your web browser. There are four types of these fields. Text, list of subtype text, long text, and long text with summary. The first two are great for shorter snippets of content. The latter types can store very large amounts of copy. Use a text field for short freeform input of alphanumeric strings, such as a person's name or a street address. Use a text list when you want to let users select between a controlled set of alphanumeric options, such as selecting from a list of colors or specifying what country they live in. The long text field is best for when you think you might have to input something longer than 255 characters. It automatically gives you a multi-line text area input versus a single line input. The long text with summary is really a specialty field. It was primarily included to support teasers for node bodies. But there are times where this function might come in handy, particularly if you want a slicked way for people to provide a synopsis of text that they've entered. Number fields provide a way of entering numeric data. This is particularly useful for any data that we might want to do math on or put numeric parameters around, such as a minimum or maximum amount. There are actually five types of numeric fields integers and lists of subtype integers, which are used to store whole numbers, and floats, decimals, and lists of subtype float for storing numbers with decimal values. Use the integer type for freeform input of whole numbers, such as the quantity of an item you might want to order, or an account number. Use the list variant when you want to limit the values to a predetermined list, such as the expiration month and year for a credit card. Use floats or decimals for freeform input of a number that might have a decimal value. Floats are used whenever the decimal precision is unknown, such as the mileage of a run or a bike ride. People might want to enter in whole miles, tenth of a mile, quarter miles, or even use some other type of precision. Use decimals where the precision is fixed, such as a price in US dollars where the number of cents is fixed to two decimal points. Lists of floats are used pretty rarely in practice, but might come in handy for certain unusual use cases. For example, you might want to enable people to enter in their height, allowing half inches. So the list might be half an inch, one inch, 1.5, and so on. One useful option I should note about numeric lists is they can be used with alphanumeric options. This might at first seem confusing. Why not just use a text list instead? What the numeric list is doing is it's storing a number reference to an alphanumeric option. And this can be very useful in certain situations to help you standardize your data. So let's say, for example, that you're creating a survey where the answers are ratings 1 through 5. But instead of just having people select a number, there could be text qualifiers such as a 3 might be average, 4 might be above average, and 5 might be excellent. 
Booleans are the simplest field type. They only have two values, on and off. You can label the on and off values to be whatever you want. Let's say, for example, you're building a form for ordering a sandwich. You might want to have options such as mayo or no mayo. One of the interesting uses of Booleans is building single item checkboxes, such as the ubiquitous I agree to these terms acceptance box found on many websites when licensing software or using licensed items. Term references allow us to associate terms with an entity. They can be structured as a predefined list or can be used free form using a text field to enter multiple comma separate values. This is often called free tagging. In many ways, this field is very similar to integer lists, and often they can be used interchangeably. But there are some differences, though. Term references have more options as they're tied into Drupal's taxonomy system. We'll learn more about how taxonomy and term references work in a later video. File fields enable us to attach files from our local computer to a piece of content. The file field allows for uploading virtually any kind of file, and the image field provides special options specific to images. Both of these are covered in more depth in previous videos. In this tutorial, we took a look at how Drupal's core fields are organized. These fields are relatively basic compared to some of the more specialized fields that you'll find in contrib modules. Yet they are the most used and form the foundation for extending content in most Drupal sites. It's vital to know what types are available and the best options to use in each situation. In a future video, we'll be doing a review of advanced fields available in Contrib.